Yo, 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 what's going on? What's happening? What's happening? It's your brother outside the queue. God damn, I'm back. Ugh. Ugh. I'm back, man. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Um, shouts out. Shouts out. I, I want to give a big shout out, man. Definitely to um, a lot of people that's been staying on the neck. You know, especially like... Uh, Staying on the neck of people like Sonetta and uh, Brother Polite, Sister Queen Strong, uh, that brother Shug, his sister Nandy. Man, stay on their neck, man. Keep doing what y'all doing. You know, that's just not my thing per se. You know, I made a few videos about it. You know, I did what I did, said what I said because it needed to be said. So that's a hundred. I'm with that but yeah i've been i've been going for a minute man i've been going for a minute i got a new job you know got a new gig and uh it was a lot of information that i was digesting so uh, i'm back i don't know for how long but uh i actually was looking over at rumble right i was looking at rumble there's a platform rumble.com i was looking at this platform and i was like yeah, I think this might be able to take over YouTube. So while I was looking through, guess who I saw? I saw Tommy Sotomayor in the video that he made. So I was like, you know what? It's Friday. I'm off. Let me just chill. And let's just... <clears throat> let's look at a Tommy Sotomayor video and let's just laugh. Now, I'm going to be real. And, and I got to keep it a, a hundred. This dude, Tommy, when it comes to black women and a lot of his talking points, he is correct about a lot of his talking points. But see, the reason why he can't get any traction is because he hates black women. And this is when most sane people get the hell off of the goddamn boat is when you hate a particular group. This is why no one wants to rock with this goof true guys. Because you hate a group of people And this is what is ultimately Fueling the shit that you're saying So I wanted to play this And so we could just laugh at this dude Because this dude actually had A person on and they were debating About uh, reparations And things of that nature Hold on, Let me bring this down Whoop. Yeah so he, he had a debate with this one brother I'm not sure if that's his name Because you know how Tommy do When he get mad he'll just boot you off So let's go and listen to this man It, it was amazing <laughs> I was listening to this last night I didn't listen to the entirety of it Because I, I had to go to sleep So let's listen to this man Like this was, this was some good stuff So I'm going to go ahead and play it And I'll pause it you know when, when when I see fit, but let's go ahead and play this. Let's listen, y'all. Y'all ready? Are you fucking ready? Let's go. Uh, so I'm particularly familiar. Um, so I'm excited to be talking to you. I genuinely am honored to be having this conversation with you because uh, I think I've always wondered if. Well, let me say this. This nigga fucked up. He should have never. You never tell Tommy Sotomayor that you were a fan or that you love his stuff. Never tell him that because he will use that against you. Oh, nigga, fuck you. Never, never tell Tommy Sotomayor that you love what he does. Never tell him that. So let's continue. If you were to encounter other people from other views who are able to articulate them, would you be open to them? And so I think this is a great opportunity for us to see that. And just for you to be expressing to me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to talking to anybody. I hate that what I'm saying. I guess it, it will broadcast different on your end. I see just a little corner of you, but that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, man. So you're right. Let me see if I can. I know what I'll do. I don't know. To see that name. Now you're not in a little corner, but I guess it will broadcast different on your end. No, it's going to look exactly the same for both of them. Oh, perfect. Um, oh wait, no, but I have to be able to capture you. Know how to do it. And let me just say, I have yet to uh, find out this brother's uh, Twitter, IG, YouTube, Rumble page. But if you if you guys know this brother's Rumble page, 
YouTube page, IG, what have you, social media. Let me know, because I would love to speak to this brother, man. Because from what I heard and what I was listening to, this nigga beat the dog shit out of Tommy Sotomayor. I listened to probably about 40 minutes of it, then I had to go to sleep. So, let's listen to the rest of this together. This was magic. I was listening to it. I was just like, yo, this nigga Tommy need to just stay on taking the crap on black women, because this ain't his lane. So let's listen to let's go. <laughs> we'll work this. We'll work it out. We will. We'll get it in just a second. Trust me, it ain't gonna take long. Uh, All right, let's fast forward a little bit. Okay. This. Catch up notifications soon. Yeah, we we we're just gonna fast forward a little bit. Um, let's I mean, go. We we got to see how this conversation go first. <laughs> <laughs> but nah. You I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit until they get to some of the arguments. Like, like, real talk though, on the Twitter though, you were very, um, you were very respectful. I've had conversations with other people who have gotten kind of ridiculous, and I'm a very responsive person. The person respectful to me, I'm particularly respectful to them. But if I feel mm -hmm. disrespected, I'm with you on that. Uh, and, and I always cheer people for like I say, hey, especially I look at it kind of like you said you in the fighting games, and then I can relate that to stuff like that. I used to play Madden all the time doing Madden tournaments, and yeah, you get mad at somebody, but at the end of it, it almost felt like a camaraderie. And I think maybe it goes that way for real fighting. At the end of those fights, those people are really punching each other. Maybe at the end of it, there's like this feel of camaraderie because we're doing something a lot of people don't want to do. And I think that in situations like this, we're doing something a lot of people, especially today, can't do. They can't stand up. Uh, they can't put their um, ideals up to scrutiny. So, right. 100%. I do everything you just said. Oh, your mic. Let's go. Make Probably something, man. Hey, hit second. that like button, man. If not, so what? Who cares? Yeah, they're about to get into it and mix it up. Because like when I when I tapped into this, I kind of just fast forwarded like twenty five minutes, and I was just like, "Let me see what this is about to see if it makes any sense." So I fast forwarded like twenty five minutes. So I haven't seen any of this. That's kind of why like we're here. All right, looks like I may have to fast forward. Look, look, everything. This one was a, I'm a Jew. Look like I was right about fast forwarding this. Tell us. About anything anymore? The best one. This is a black Jew. What the, what the crap? I got it at there two seventy. Okay, we should be solving now, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Dang, I'm sorry. This, this, I've never had so many technical difficulties in a long time, but it's okay. We're on the other side. Always down. Man, that's crazy. This is this is something else. Uh, okay, so anyway, what were we saying? Yes, I totally agree about the camaraderie. I also agree that most people aren't willing to have these kinds of conversations. I remember I feel that way. I still feel that way about a lot of Republican folks. I remember there was one person um, who really changed my opinion of her because she actually had a conversation and she changed the way I had conversations because I used to be uh, pretty aggressive in debates. And from that conversation with her, it made me realize that um Let's not go. being aggressive and just making sure that like it's not personal but we're just expressing ideas it makes it a lot easier to actually um really confront things and get to the bottom yeah i'm sorry i'm gonna have to put it at 1.5 speed i hope y'all are okay with that listening to shit at regular speed just don't work for me no more i, I need 1.5 or better so we can kind of get right to it you know let's go some of things without people getting defensive and emotional and all of those things so uh you know, I'm happy to have these conversations. There's a few folks that I still I have to talk to. I, got, I mean, it's on my bucket list. I got to get at Ben Shapiro one of these days. I have to talk to him. It just mm -hmm. has to happen. Um, Tucker Carlson, I'll pass on that one. But anyway. Oh, um, why? Because it's, so like Tucker Carlson, I, I I mean, I think when when Fox got sued, it very clearly displayed exactly who that man was. You know what I mean? Like, he, I feel like with the exposure of those text messages, it very clearly like demonstrated that he did not believe in a lot of the things that he was saying. He understood, uh, he understood it was false and continued to perpetuate it because it was good for his ratings. And he was afraid that, you know, that there was a competition between Fox and another news station. So I think the fact that he was willing to do that shows a lack of integrity. And then if that's the case, then you're doing whatever you can for rating. Then it's no longer that you're un un uneducated or uninformed. You're disingenuous. And I can't stand for that. I can't respect a person like that. But isn't that difficult in, 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 in what it is we do? Because everybody sees money, they see ratings, they see an opportunity and many the people if we just want to be honest had no opportunity before something like this mm -hmm. oh for sure well, we can't argument for everything i'm so glad you make that point because it really goes into the hip-hop thing you were talking about earlier about like hip-hop music and you know in the space that we had right like for a lot of people the reason why black people are willing to sell out their music the way that they have to like the caricature that hip-hop has become of black culture is because it is their only opportunity and they recognize that the labels have the power so if i want to, to actually be successful i have to do what the label is willing to promote and the label is only willing to promote violence sex yeah. drugs etc and so then a lot of artists are doing things that are not necessarily representative of what they intended or, or 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 would or wanted to do and as a result of that the music isn't actually a representation of their artistry and i can understand why someone would do that while also recognizing that it's an inappropriate thing to do and how harmful it is to black folks mm -hmm. and so i think um when we start
talking about like the because the, the relationship between hip hop and black culture and how deleterious it's been by being so pervasive. Well, well uh, I had my mic muted, but what I said was what a lot of these rappers are doing, men and women, should be considered unsavory, and that should be that, and, and it shouldn't be produced, it shouldn't be uh, put on a pedestal, it shouldn't be put out. Because a lot of the stripper rap, the, the all of this, the, the women doing it, the men doing it, a lot of the rap today is terrible, uh, sexy red, whatever that half breed name is, the one with the crazy looking fro, who looks who looks like she has a Jew fro, the light skin, I, I don't even know her name, I forget her name, it looks disgusting as fuck, uh, ugh, I'm disgusted, but let's go within our culture and so influential on the youth then we have to look at the labels that are only willing to promote these things and their intentional misshaping of hip-hop from the cultural mm -hmm. influential positive thing that it was in its inception to what it's become now i agree yeah we, we start off on the wrong foot man all right let's get into the reparations and systemic oppression conversation because that's where that's what we we're here for so let's start off, first off do you believe in systemic oppression uh, yeah, I believe that uh, there is uh, oppression of people by the system and whatever people they deem need to be oppressed or d people they want to subjugate. Then, yes, I believe that there are uh, several systems uh, that's been in place throughout kingdoms, throughout uh, history that has shown that there are people who they target to oppress. Okay. okay. Do you, would you mind if we constrain this? Oh, I'm getting an echo right now. Oh, okay, it's gone. Would you mind if we constrain this conversation specifically to the U.S.? Sure. Okay. So within the U.S., you would say that there has been... Hey, is that too fast for y'all? Put a one for yes, a two for no, because I know some people, you know, can't take the fast speed. So if y'all want me to bring it down a little bit more to make it a bit more palatable, if y'all want me to bring it down, bring the speed down just a little bit more, but me, uh, I'm okay with this. So just let me know. And, is, and still is systemic oppression? Uh, there's been, yes, throughout the U.S., there's been systemic oppression of uh, not only blacks, but other people as well. But uh, I'm sure you're speaking now. See, I find that interesting that Tommy Sotomayor agrees that there has been systemic oppression. And I think every argument that he's going to make subsequently will serve as a dagger to his own argument. Because, number one, he and see, this is a part that I didn't hear. Because, like I said, I fast forwarded like 25 minutes into it. And I didn't know he said this. So... If he, if Tommy Sotomayor agrees that there is systemic oppression, then he would also have to understand that the people who were served this systemic oppression should be rewarded with something. Oh, oh, Gary says a little bit too fast. Okay, I'll bring it down a little bit. That's cool. We, we're going to bring it from 1.5 to 125. That's cool. Because I, I want you guys to actually hear the message. I want you guys to actually hear it. So that's cool now mainly blacks right absolutely the reason why i always create this distinction between black people and other what they now call people of color which is a phrase that i kind of disagree with um in a lot a lot, lot of ways is because black people had a very specific this country has a very specific anti-black systemic oppression for instance when it came to uh plessy versus ferguson which required us to be in different cars than you know the white people mm -hmm. uh hispanics were allowed to use the same cars as white people as were asians during that time that thing only applied to black people when it came to segregation of education, oh, black people need to go to inferior schools. There was only black people. Hispanics and Asians were able to go to the schools with the white folks. And when Hispanics finally got segregated, they ended up challenging it, not on the grounds that, hey, segregation is wrong, but on the grounds that, hey, we are white. And so we should not be segregated. All right. So the first thing that we see, the first thing that we see that the brother fanatic Riley brings up is Plessy versus Ferguson. So we see that he brings up something specifically that only affects black people now tommy just said that he agrees that people you know have been oppressed so now when this brother fanatic rally brings up one particular thing that only affects black people to where you may have asians that can consider themselves white you may have hispanics that can consider themselves white black people we cannot consider ourselves white we're black that's it Signed, sealed, delivered, I'm floored. That's all. So let's see how Tommy responds to that because we know it's going to be something coonish he's going to say. So let's listen. So when it came to using the bathrooms, when it came to like schools, when it came to like job applications, all of those things, for all representation, Hispanic people were white. And Asians were also reaping all of the benefits from their proximity to whiteness as well. So to me, whenever I'm talking about systemic oppression, not that there hasn't been any systemic oppression against these other groups, I tend to focus specifically on black people as that is the most egregious form. And I feel like benign neglect causes us to focus on all of the rest of these other groups who weren't necessarily impacted in the same way. 
Okay, if you can tell them, you said um, it's the most egregious. Explain to them why it's the most egregious. Well, see, let me just pause this momentarily because Tommy didn't want to address the benign neglect. Because when it comes to all of these other parties, they can address what happened in in real time, what these people were going through. But see, the brother fanatic rally, he brought up benign neglect as to where the government could say, yeah, we understand that you guys are going through this, but that doesn't mean we have to do anything for you. Yes. OK, we can understand. We see you riding in the street. We, we see the red summer. We see what's going on, but we don't have to do anything for you. But Tommy chooses to go, well, what about this? Let's listen a bit more. Well, it's the most egregious because of the fact that when you look at, again, not just for, so education is particularly important, but when education specifically says, hey, we're going to keep this from you guys by focusing specifically on black people, I mean, I mean by, by, we're, we're going to deny this education specifically to black people, then at that point, then yes, there might be other forms of oppression against other people, but what's happening to black people is significantly worse. Um, mm -hmm. Then when you have all of this dejection from years of systemic oppression and not being able to be, um, to participate within the law and things like that, those things right there are particularly heinous um when you have all of these things that have like created these systems of poverty that have like created like the environments that would cause black people to remain in these places but then you don't do that to other groups then it it sees it seems like okay yet again this is unfair and it seems like that would negatively impact black people more so than these other groups and what we're what we're seeing is for example middle eastern people and asian people we're seeing like uh so much more progress aimed at them than us when we look at things like hate crimes and i'm trying to land it here because i'm going on a bit you look mm -hmm. at hate crimes Hate crimes are specifically the, the, the largest group of people who are attacked um, by hate crimes in this country are black people. The largest constraining factor for which type of hate crime you're going to get is race. And the largest like race that's receiving hate crimes is black people. So it seems like that is something that is aimed at us, that is negatively impacting us. And so to me, it, it feels like that is a... Uh, it, the, the system has just been intentionally armed and aimed at us. The war on drugs was decidedly aimed at black people. Um, so many political things were aimed directly at black people. So that's mm -hmm. why I feel more egregious against us than others. And see, I'm glad this brother said that because it's not only the concerted effort, it's also the dejection, as the brother said. It's the concerted effort to fuck over black people. And it's also the, de the dejection, like, fuck it, whatever happens to them happens to them. That's the dejection. So we have the concerted effort, like, okay, we're going to push these drugs in this particular community. And then there's also the dejection like ah, whatever happens to him happens to him so what that's dejection okay whatever that's that's indifference whatever happens happens so i'm glad he brought that up so now let's see how tommy sotomayor responds to this and, and i guarantee you i haven't heard this i guarantee you he's going to respond by attempting to move the goalpost to talk about something totally different that doesn't even matter now you can see as it's still frame he's thinking about something he's thinking about something how to twist this and how to turn it because the truth of the matter is if you look at the history of black folk here in america there is no way that you can do it there, there is nothing else that you can look at you have to look at the benign neglect which is also uh, uh dejection saying fuck it who cares and then there's also a concerted effort to put drugs in the black community. We see both of these things happening at the same time, meaning both of these things are true at the same time. So what the fuck is Tommy Sotomayor going to say to this? What can he say to this? What can anybody say to this? This is why that you had Biden and, and Clinton say, we apologize for the three strikes laws. This is why they apologize is because they understood that a, there was a concerted effort to do these things to the black community. And B, what we saw was there was also a dejection, a, a not giving of a fuck of what happened to us. So this is why they apologized. But let's see what Tommy Sotomayor says to this. Let's go. Other groups. Okay. Um, just this idea that whites tend to like some people and not like us. Maybe they don't like us. What the fuck does that have to do with what this dude just said? He was talking about the dejection, the not giving a fuck of what happened to the black community. What does this have to do with anything? See, this man, 
there's so much i can say let me just play because I, I i don't want to interject so much i, I want to play a lot of this let me just play it late like, this dude is just off base off kilter he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about this is Oh, hold on. My, okay, here we go. Yeah, this is actually awful. So let me just play a, a bit more. Let's go. That's because if, if you just ever thought about it, I don't know who talks about it, but maybe they don't like us because almost everywhere we go in the world, the people don't like us too. And they got it in common. If you think about it, the darker they are in almost every place in the in the world, they kind of look down on the darker people. That is true. Um, but I feel like a lot of that is controlled by the media. Um, I think whiteness, uh, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's part of white supremacy that has created this environment in which we have demonized like any person who is darker than white people and the darker you are the further you are away from whiteness then the more the demonized you're going to be um and they've had these sort of racial caste systems all around the world as you pointed out in india where you have very dark-skinned indian people who are treated significantly uh worse than their lighter skinned counterparts obviously you have the same thing in hispanic cultures where they what they have a phrase i believe is called mejorar la raza which means improve the race by specifically um uh having children with people who are lighter or lighter skinned than you are um so yes i i Yes, there is a specific anti-blackness and the darker your skin is, the more likely you are to be mistreated. Um, I think they even did studies where they determined that black people going through the court system are significantly more likely, um, if you have dark skinned, to be seen as guilty for the same evidence as light skinned counterparts, right? So then it's just like, so yes, this anti-blackness is there. Um, colorism is also there. And I would say all of those things are created by white supremacy. And so rather than it just being something that's in common with these other groups, I would say it's something that's caused specifically by some of the U.S.'s particular bigotry or European bigotry uh, that has really just been spread around the, the world. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into it. What is it that you you, you want to talk to me about the because um, I, I, I love I've been having the conversations for a couple of days. Well, probably about a week now. Reparations and systematic oppression. I know you this dude has systematically laid out exactly what he's talking about. And Tommy's now saying, well, what do you want me? What do you want to talk about? He's laid out his argument and he wants you to defend it. But see, Tommy isn't able to defend it. And this is why you need to. St this is why Tommy Sotomayor needs to stay in that sphere of hating black women. Stay there, bro, because you know shit about politics. You don't fucking know. And on top of that, what he attempts to do is he he attempts to give white people uh, the the utmost leverage. Bro, stop. Stay where the fuck you are. This ain't for you. Let's continue you're asking me right now about systematic oppression i can agree with you that there is systematic oppression in the united states but i guess i also try to just wonder sometimes people just don't like you they just don't like you and when people don't like you what do you do how do you even that why does the world have to be even so here's what i would say mm -hmm. as a person you, you cannot force other people to like you and your success is ultimately your responsibility. So then that means then, if you're applying for a job and they're throwing out your resume because of the fact that you have a black sounding name, then in those- Hold on, let me, let me just say this. Even though your success is incumbent upon what you do, it does not mean that there is not another person that may sit and pull the lever to allow or disallow you to do things at the same time so yes everything you do is incumbent upon you in your actions but it does not mean that there is not a person behind you know that's that that's pulling the lever that that can allow you to do things and disallow you to do things also if, if we're going to be honest but let's go in those cases, you might either want to try to go by a different name while we wait, for, while we work on trying to fix the system, or try to find a black employer who's not going to be dissuaded by your name, or make yourself so attractive that you can't, they, they almost can't reject you. Now, that's a tall order, and I would imagine that the average person isn't going. What he just said, I literally just said that. <laughs> I literally just said that. So, shout out, I see Bad Homebrew, Lavert, Ajiz, Dugu, Gary Moore, uh, I am more, uh, excuse me, I am Mana. Shouts out to y'all, but let's get to a little bit, uh, let's get through a little bit more of this. And if y'all want to come through and chop it up, I'm definitely here. But yeah, let's talk about it. Let's go. 
going to meet that meet, meet that bar. But that's what I would advise for you to do. But I think simply acknowledging that these types of things have happened historically and are continuing to happen now is I think the first step towards us being able to acknowledge that something has to be done to offset the traje trajectory that has been caused by this intentional segregation and oppression, et cetera. So, so who do we need to acknowledge it? Us as a people or them as the outsiders? The country. I think the government needs to acknowledge it. Um, because if we're talking see did y'all hear that because tommy thought he was sick so who needs to acknowledge it us or the outsiders no 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 no. white people here in america they aren't outsiders they're the peoples that they're the movers and the shakers they're the people that moves the, the, the the chains and the levers of how white supremacy goes so miss me with that shit miss me with that Oh, so who do we need to address? No, we need to address white people. Let me rewind that because he thought he was slick. <laughs> Let me rewind that. Continuing to happen now is I think the first step towards us being able to acknowledge that something has to be done to offset the traje trajectory that has been caused by this intentional segregation and oppression, etc. So, so who do we need to acknowledge it? Us as a people or them as the outsiders? No, once again, it's necessary for the people who are the purveyors, the people who are the people that's uh, uh, doing the shit. They have to understand it. It ain't no fucking outsiders. The people who are doing it, why would you call them outsiders? Why would the white people who enjoy the luxurious uh, 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 system of white supremacy, why the fuck would we call them outsiders? They're the players. They're the shakers and the movers of this shit. Why in the fuck would they be outsiders? See, he was fishing just now. He wanted the brother to be like, well, yeah, we, we got to look at these people. So he could be like, well, why the fuck would we look at them? They're, they're the outsiders. No. They're not the outsiders. These are the people with the hidden fucking hand. These are the people that has their fucking hand behind his goddamn back. Said, oh, black women ain't shit. These bitches, da 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 da. These are the motherfuckers that, that, that come into his chat that pay him money. These are the people that support him. These white supremacists that would love nothing more than for him to say, all black women ain't SHIT, so forth and so on. These are the people that we are against. We see these people. He sees these people. And as long as he's getting cash apps and whatever the case may be, he's okay with it. But us? No, we aren't. We're not okay with it. You know why? It's because we see where that leads. Let's go the country i think the government needs to acknowledge it um because if we're talking about reparations it's not about individuals it's not about it, it's the government the government creates the environment that permits that type of behavior and so i would say if we can get the government people in congress on board with the idea that we have to create better legislation to offset, offset this damage then we would probably be pretty we, we could make some progress that's what happened during the civil rights movement um it didn't fix everything but it definitely created progress there's no way around that and i think that we just need more progress OK, and, and this progress comes from, you said, the government. The government needs to um, kind of set things. No, no, no fucking no. See how he just tried to slide that in there? Well, this progress comes from the government. No, it doesn't come from the government. It comes from a need from the people. It comes from a need of the people. And, and there's a particular group of the people who are saying that, hey, we need this. So it doesn't come from the government. The precipice is the people. Stop that. But see, people who don't know no fucking better would, would allow Tommy to get away with this shit. But let's go. He's right. Absolutely. And, and, and again, in the form of land or finances or a mixture. Oh, man, uh, definitely a mixture. Um, I believe in like a, a full encompassing reparations plan. Um, but first off, before we get directly oh, into yeah, that. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. I got you. But uh, so, so, so to be sure, so you, you do agree um, that the economic conditions of black people, would you say that that is caused um, in part by some of the systemic oppression, like the, the, the economic conditions of black people in contrast to the economic conditions of white people? Yeah, I would I would assume that, yeah, they have the ability to try to make somebody that looks more like them a little more comfortable in this country than someone who doesn't. Man, Tommy, and, listen. and once they've done that, you, you run into a, a, a wall sometimes that they're taking something from you. They're constantly being ahead of you. Right. 
this is hard because I'm, 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 I'm one. I'm excited because we agree about so much. I really expect to push back on every single one of these points, and that's why you can't judge a book by its cover. And I get some of your content is inflammatory, but up till now, I've expected us to disagree on everything so far. We're going to probably you know, speed run through this. More nuanced. My conversations are more nuanced than what people see when they see a title or when they get a clip, and that's why nobody typically wants to have a long form discussion with me because in a long form, all these things are more nuanced. I think the problem with blacks, blacks try to make things just. Uh, Bullshit. This nigga, listen to what he just said. He's just said blacks. He just said blacks. He said his conversations are more nuanced. And he was insinuating that blacks can't understand, uh, uh can't understand his nuance. No, nigga, you have no nuance. There is no nuance. You you literally just agree with everything that Fanatic Riley just said. So what the fuck is nuance that, that we need to understand what the fuck you're talking about that's different or, or, or so contrast than what the fuck that Fanatic Riley just said? Nothing is contrast if you're agreeing. So what the fuck is the nuance? Nothing is different. Or do you not understand what the fuck nuance mean and you're just using it to sound more intelligent than what you think you are? Nothing what the fuck this nigga just said was nuance or nuanced. Fuck out of here. Let's go. You're on the you're a coon or you're not. Everything seems to be you're a coon or you're not. You're for blacks or you're not. And it's this this, this straight line down the middle. This 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 uh razor sharp surgeon's edge down the middle. And one step the wrong way, one word the wrong way. You're on the outside. And I think, just my opinion, I think blacks are just as or more discriminatory than whites because we're constantly looking for ways to throw other blacks out of the cool kids club. Think about I it. Don't, there we go. There we go. There we go. So now what he's done is his best rendition of I'm a coon, but I don't want to be a coon because, you know, you guys are attempting to kick me out of the cool kids club well hold on nigga if you don't want to get kicked the fuck out then why are you operating like the coon that the fuck you are so it's not that we're attempting to kick you out just for shits and giggles it's because of your act it's because of the shit the the, the things that you're saying in the way how you feel about black people so fuck you get the fuck out of here what the fuck is he talking about Oh, because you may feel like this You may be kicked out of the cool kids club No, this is not the cool kids club These are niggas who understand That our ancestors worked for free For 287 motherfucking years And we want retro fucking butian In the form of checks Can we get those or nah? And you are one that's standing in the motherfucking way And we saying fuck you cool ass nigga Get the fuck out of here that's what we're saying and if we want to be precise that's actually all we're saying and not only are we saying that to cool ass niggas like tommy sotomayor we're also saying that to white people and it's unfortunate that we have to say it to tommy sotomayor because he doesn't get it but white people get it they know let's go looking for ways to throw them out we have not gotten any reparations yet but what did they start ados ados split fba and that was all about let's not give these people reparations if we get them these people are bad there and now it's these people who are non-fba are the ones who are doing all the rap music and making us look bad in front of people i'm like y'all hadn't even got so what so what so what we are the originators of the shit we're talking about we we should have autonomy of what we want and what we don't want when it comes to what we created you fucking idiot we should have autonomy when it comes to what we want in our culture and what we don't want in our culture look at anybody from western europe when they come to fuck over here and there's a conglomerate of these people they're able to say no 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 this is not our culture this is not our culture this is bullshit no 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 they're able to say that you know what we do we respect that we respect that but see what we see is that africans can come over here uh haitians whatever the fuck 
these other people can come over here and do whatever the fuck they want to do and they're just they run up under the banner of black and us black americans who have been here since time immemorial we have to accept all of that shit but instead what we're saying is no we don't want to accept what the fuck these these haitian nationals are doing just, just because they come over here and now white people consider them black we're saying no we don't want that we don't want that and that's an issue right that's an issue but you can have Eastern Europeans can come over here and say, "Oh no, 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 no!" What these South, what what these Southeast Europeans are doing, that's not our culture. It's 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 free and fair game for them to say it. But when you have a person that can come from Zimbabwe or East Africa or whatever the fuck, and we just say, "Hey, you know what? These ain't our people." You you have these people, uh. uh Suki Hana and all of these crazy people that, that that are that don't have no lineage whatsoever from America and we just say hey yo she ain't our people now it's a problem that we say that she ain't our people we have to we have to commiserate we have to commiserate and be like you know what we're all black so Suki Hana is our people no we want to disown that bitch we want to disown the disgusting parts of black culture to say, yes, it is black culture, but it's not African-American black culture. This is some shit that came from somewhere else. Because I can guarantee you right now, her family going back 200 years would not appreciate the shit that she did. And me and my family... That has been here that helped build this fucking nation that that come from slaves. Fuck no, we wouldn't be. Man, no. We don't want that. So I think it's fair for us to say we don't want that bullshit ass culture that they're trying to do. That they're trying to push on us, on black people. We don't fucking want it. Take it back. Fuck no. I don't want it. Let's go the money yet and y'all already arguing about how to split it yeah so listen I, i'm 100 percent in agreement with you about a lot of those things regarding like the fba call um because it seems like a lot of them function in a way that is so antagonistic towards immigrant black people more so than it is um antagonistic towards white supremacy and that's something <laughs> that i find obviously problematic um i think the greatest threat to african americans to black people within this country is obviously uh white supremacy that has been the greatest threat and i don't see um black immigrants surpassing that anytime what i will say is there are great sentiments of, of anti-black sentiments um I mean, anti-blackness within immigrants um Hundred percent in agreement with you about a lot of those things regarding like the FBA call, um, because it seems like a lot of them function in a way that is so antagonistic towards immigrant black people more so than it is um, antagonistic towards white supremacy, and that's something that I find obviously problematic. Um, I think the greatest threat Listen. to African Americans to black people within this country is obviously uh, white supremacy. So the greatest threat is white supremacy. I agree. Now, listen what he said after that. I want y'all to listen, and then I'm just going to let it play. That has been the greatest threat, and I don't see um, black immigrants surpassing that any time. He doesn't see, which I would agree. I don't, I don't see black immigrants surpassing white supremacy. Fuck no. That's stupid as shit. Let's go. What I will say is there are great sentiments of, of anti-black sentiments, um, I mean, anti-blackness within immigrants. There is also anti-blackness within immigrants. So when it comes to immigrants, that's all we're saying. We're not saying, hey, you niggas from Haiti, Jamaica, wherever the fuck you come from, you can't come over here and you can't live and, 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 and utilize your potential to be the best that you are. No. But what we do understand from niggas that have been over here that have been over here we understand what's going on you niggas don't fucking fully get it 
but let's go um, black immigrants as well so I, I understand that that's there but that can't be the primary focus i also recognize that as a lineage and as an and you know the reason why it can't be the primary focus is because immigrants aren't the movers and the shakers or, or the people that can pull the lever if we actually get reparations or not so why in the fuck are we focusing in on them i get that so the shit that Tariq Nasheed does with focusing in on uh, the people that, that are not necessarily from America, that's all bullshit. Like he said, it's a fucking cult. It's garbage. It's stupid. It's stupid. We shouldn't be trying to focus in on these people who just come over here and, and you know, that they may drive a taxi or Uber or some shit. We shouldn't be focusing our energy on them. But we should keep our motherfucking eyes open for the bullshit that they may or may not purvey. You motherfucking right. <clears throat> Let's go. Ethnicity, uh, <clears throat> blackness uh, within the United States, within that context, is distinct from immigrant black people. We recognize that immigrant black people are outperforming um, uh, ethnic blacks from the Uni United States by a lot. Um, they have stronger family for uh, fa family uh stronger family units they have significantly more likely a uh, college graduation etc so i would say for all of these reasons if we're talking about reparations and the harms and, and stigmatiz stigmatization that has been aimed at specifically the black people who have been in this country then it seems like uh money is one of the ways that people use to kind of Facts. overcome that and if immigrants are more likely to have more money then they're not subject to the same thing not that they're not encountering any anti-blackness but yeah the fact of the matter is, go ahead well I, I just want to ask i'm sorry to cut you off but i was just wondering okay. don't you think that we concentrate too much on quote unquote white supremacy and i could be wrong, no no what the fuck would make you think that we focus too much on white supremacy what the fuck would make a stupid nigga say that we may focus too much on white supremacy what the fuck would make a stupid nigga even that this shit would come out of his mouth when we see black people were here in the before the inception of america and we saw white people were here before the inception of america but now we see a vast difference that constitutes approximately a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars the fuck are you talking about no we don't if if we want to be honest we don't focus enough let's go but it just seems to me like when you said it's the greatest threat other than and this white supremacy is causing us so much problems but then it's very difficult for me to believe it because white supremacy is allowing us to be on every platform we're broadcasting no white supremacy is not allowing you to be on a fucking thing white supremacy is making money because you are on x y or z niggas are stupid as shit white supremacy is making money because you are listen watch this let me keep it a buck i'm on fucking youtube right now guess what this stream right here that i'm doing right now it doesn't belong to me it belongs to youtube this is why they're able to mute my stream this is why they're able to uh disable my account because it belongs to them i can't take youtube to court i can't take them to court because a lot of stupid niggas they don't understand that when you sign up for for an account you give youtube which the parent company google essentially you give them your content this is why this is why that when you sign up for the partner program this is why when you sign up for the partner program they can put videos on your they, they can put they can put uh videos on your video but never give you a fucking dime because it's theirs it's their platform it's their platform they can do whatever the fuck they want and see we confuse this shit way too much but let's go Testing two right now are owned by whites and each of these platforms that we're broadcasting to has been able to create wealth <laughs> amongst blacks that shouldn't have been allowed and these and, and i'll say it this way because they are constantly talking about white people ain't shit uh, white supremacy is horrible and all of these things and in the process they're enriching themselves show me where white supremacy is good that's all the fuck you gotta do
everything else is a non-starter for me. Show me where white supremacy is good. But but you know what? L- l- let me just pause and I'm gonna play a little bit more and we could just I- I'm gonna play like three to four minutes to where I don't speak. On these white platforms while doing it. And if white supremacy I'm sorry, but this nigga's so fucking dumb. It makes me stop, but... Supremacy was so oppressive. How was this new form of um, black jobs? Because most blacks didn't. And a lot of blacks <laughs> jumped on this bandwagon, especially during the uh, COVID thing. They jumped on it and they've been allowed to say all the things that they, the oppressor should not want them to say and get paid doing it. These jobs didn't come from blacks. These jobs came from uh, blacks using white stuff to enrich themselves. Every one of them, when you say hit that cash app, that's a white person. When you say um, go to Venmo, white. Follow me on Twitter, white. Follow me on Instagram, white. Broadcast on kick, broadcast. All these things are white. Just curious, how is that? The oppression seems overblown. Oh, okay. So let's. Hold on, man. I just gotta say this. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna let it play. I promise. This is the dumbest question I've ever heard in my life. What 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 Tommy is asking is, okay. So if there's so much oppression, then why are black people being allowed on this platform or that platform? Hey, hello, Earth to Stupid. They want to make money. But guess what? You know what they don't do to make money? They don't allow you to deny the Holocaust. They don't give a fuck if you talk about, oh, like, like what's the stupid nigga that says, oh, the slave trade happened in reverse? They'll allow you to do that all fucking day. That dirtbag ass nigga Dane Calloway They'll let you do that all day But you know what they won't do They won't allow you to say That the holocaust never happened So when you ask these stupid fucking questions And you don't get a fucking answer People just look At you in amazement Like did he really ask that shit This is what's going on this nigga just said, well, see, they, they allow black people to do this and allow black people. No, they're not allowing niggas to really do a fucking thing. God damn, this nigga's dumb as shit. All right, let, let me just play this, man. I, I'm going I'm to I'm play this, man, because it's so dumb to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I listen to this shit. It's so fucking stupid. Because I, I didn't listen to this. So this is real time. So let's go. Let's talk. That's crazy. I, that was I, we're finding a serious disagreement here. I knew I would. Um, okay. So first off, when we start talking about systemic oppression, like first off, like this stuff happens Stupid. way before we're talking about adulthood and trying to like make success on these platforms, which are already particularly discriminatory. You'll find that people, black people, doing the same thing, having to even be of a higher quality, have a harder time meet, re, uh, meeting success than their white counterparts. I'll give you a quick example. I'm a musician, okay? I play music, I play the piano, and um, I have a gift with my ear. I can play pretty much any song I hear with literally an, an ear that's more accurate than any other person I've ever heard in my entire life's ear. Like, legit, oh, actually there's one kid I saw online, this little gifted genius eight-year-old whose ear is literally, I think, the greatest in the world. Besides that kid, I've never in my life encountered a person who has an ear like mine, yet. If a white person gets on there and does the same thing at a mediocre level, they're more likely to meet more success. You'll find well, people. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why I don't have a problem with that. Go ahead. They're more of them than us. Well, oh no, yeah. So you're describing why these systems still favor. I mean, well, why these these systems still favor still, white people? They're, they're the one who created it. Well, let's, let's, let's saying they're no, the no, one no. who created it, right? Well, if that's the case, then you would be, be able to make the argument that Eminem shouldn't be the greatest hip hop artist, right? He shouldn't have the highest sales or, or, or the results and records that he does, but he does. And that was music created by black people, supported okay, by in black case, people. In that, in that case, there shouldn't be a black man like LeBron James who's made. No, 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 no. I'm not making that argument. I'm not saying let's go down that going down that train. I'm saying that that's obviously ignorant because I don't think that you well, had I'm the same. You didn't have that wrong. outrage. No, no, no. But you didn't have that outrage, or you didn't have this perspective about Eminem, unless you did. Maybe, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Do you feel well, I, that Eminem should? I said, I said Eminem got the numbers he got because the whites backed him. Sure. Do you feel like he shouldn't have been allowed to do the music that he was doing? Allowed to do the music? Sure. No, I don't think there's an idea of being allowed to do the music. We're in America. You should be able to do the music just like Cowboy Troy can do uh, what he did country music. Okay, just so like, the uh, black people should be able to be on Twitch or any of these other platforms and do the same things that they're doing. No, I, I, I didn't say that they shouldn't be able to do the same thing. I said you said their numbers are bigger. And I said, but right. of course they should be. They have a larger, they have a larger group of people. 
Okay, so then if we agree then, so then that these are open platforms because the country has obviously came to its senses and said that we can't just discriminate and racially intentionally just like segregate these platforms and say black people can't be a part of them. That doesn't mean that that's an end to white supremacy. That doesn't that doesn't fix the fact that my my, my the house that my, my grandmother bought was freaking redlined. That doesn't change the inheritance that my mother got three and a half years ago. That didn't change the loans that my when my mother refinanced her, her home, her and my, my father, when they refinanced the loan on their house, it didn't change the fact that they were still being like undercut there or that oh, was what I was talking about. happening. But it does change what I was talking about, which was simple. I said, today, I think that this idea of white supremacy is overblown. So this is where, look, to say a phrase like overblown is a relative term. And I don't know, overblown to what? Like, to what degree are we going to compare it to overblown? Okay. Okay, well, hold on. Overblown according to the psychopaths on Twitter who are saying that white supremacy is everything? Or are we going to say it's overblown by the Republican Party who are literally making arguments like Tucker Carlson that white supremacy doesn't exist? It can be overblown, but I can't speak for everyone else. What I can say is that white supremacy is still effective. It's still impactful. And we're seeing the results of it um, in, in, in several studies across the country today. That's what I would say. Uh, now, the degree of overblownness, I don't even know how to co contend with that because I, I'm, I, I don't know. I haven't really given it a value statement for us to be able to contend that. Well, I was trying to answer that. And you did say that um, we were talking earlier. We were talking about how this is supposed to be the most important thing in Blacks' lives. And I don't think it is. It is the most. I didn't say uh, that. No, no, I'm saying that. I, but, but when I was talking earlier, I was saying that's what I hear when you, when you, when you said uh, Blacks, when we were talking, Blacks going at other Blacks and being divisive amongst Blacks is almost as problematic as white supremacy no that's not what the fuck he said he was talking about blacks that come from other countries he made it clear he was talking about blacks that come from other countries that come over here and they attempt to exude their blackness that 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 is contrary to what the fuck we Exude. That's what the fuck he was talking about. He had, he said nothing about that. So once again, Tommy's lying again just to try to make a point to fit himself into the argument. No, that's and not I think what it was way more problematic than so-called white supremacy. No, that's not what I was saying. What I was saying. Hey, what was, were you saying? I was saying that the focus should be on white supremacy as it is far more impactful than the impact of the immigrants. Like immigrant black people. They're one, they're smaller in number, two, they're smaller in power. And so then the idea that that should be the pr primary focus of any ethnic groups, like especially something that's pro black, if we're going to be focusing on any exactly that's what he was saying. He was saying that the, these other blacks, that these immigrant blacks that come over here, they should not be looked at as what the fuck we should be following because they should not be the forefront that that native blacks, you know, who, who've been here. That can trace the ancestry. No, fuck no. We shouldn't be looking up to them. We should be setting a standard. That's that's in a nutshell what the brother was saying. So no, Tom is lying again. Anything, it shouldn't be immigrant black people as much as it should be white supremacy, as white supremacy is far more impactful. That was my and Why should we be focusing on white supremacy? Because I don't think, I mean, I don't think white supremacy is impactful to the point where, just like you said, that's minute. This nigga just said he don't think that white supremacy is impactful. This nigga just said he don't think that white supremacy is impactful. But let's listen. I think white supremacy is just as minuscule as that. I think both of them are overblown and made up. And that's why I use the example of all the things that we're allowed to do, because my thought behind white supremacy would be that they're not going to allow us to sit up here and constantly talk about it, put them down and get paid doing it. I don't so, think they do that. That sounds like a straw man there, because no one's saying that white supremacy is all powerful and that there aren't things that have prevented them from segregating <laughs> certain things that we're doing. For example, like, yes, we are able to be on these platforms because they're not allowed to racially discriminate. That is invalid. They chose all of not to. There was not a black who made this. No, no, no. Say they're not no, allowed. No, no, no. No, no, no. They're legally not able to discriminate and prevent black people from using Twitch.tv that was that or they YouTube. Legally, them, though, they did it. So that means they allowed it. It's if not I'm, just them. It was, there was an entire I'm political process with, an, with God knows how many different oh, riots that happened in the country. Oh, riots were them. happening. Huh? No, riots oh, were happening. Them. You're saying white people were rioting more so than black people? Hold in on. the civil rights they movement? Were, they rioted. Who wrote the law? Who? Okay, see, he's trying to get down the brass tacks to try to say, well, white people were the one that allowed it because they were the one, you know, that, that signed the bill. Yes, this is true. White people were the ones that signed the bill. But if we really want to get down the brass tacks, you know why they signed the fucking bill? It's because black people were tearing shit the fuck up. Red Summer. 
When King got killed Niggas tore shit the fuck up We tore this shit up We tore it up We tore it the fuck up This is what made them say You know what okay yeah We're gonna have to give these Negroes something Is because they're not gonna stop tearing our shit up Until we give them something Tommy doesn't know his history He's outside of his lane He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about The only reason that they gave us what they gave us Is because we did something to get it So he's making it seem like Oh well white people gave it to black people Not necessarily Black people took that shit No different if we look at our time in slavery Let's let's take a look Let's just take a, a brief gander If you will Let's take a brief gander At all the fucking slave Hold on Watch this Let me just kill this shit real quick Let me just kill this shit real quick So If we look at all of the fucking slave revolts Watch this shit Hold on Watch this shit I can look this shit up The amount of slave revolts that happened Niggas wasn't sitting back Waiting on white people to do a fucking thing They had to do what the fuck they did They had to do the shit like niggas is playing game. Like like niggas is playing games with this. Niggas is really playing games. Like like black people just sat there and just waited for white people to free us. And like this is why I always say, and no disrespect to Martin Luther King, you know, and, and all of the brothers, but this shit wasn't finna go like another hundred years. Niggas was ready to fucking die for this shit I appreciate the brother MLK And all of the brothers that, that died And gave their life in the struggle But I'd be a fucking fool To think that there was gonna be no one That would give their fucking life For black people You're a fucking crazy person Niggas had been doing it Every fucking year Since slavery Niggas have been doing it forever I'm never finna take a shit On motherfucking Martin Luther King And what the fuck he did But you're a motherfucking crazy nigga To think that we would sit our fucking black ass Right the fuck here For another fucking hundred years And not do nothing That's not the fuck the way how this shit worked This is what the fuck they wanna tell you stupid niggas But this ain't how it worked Black people ain't just sit their motherfucking ass there And wait for somebody else to give them some motherfucking freedom We took our shit We said we finna tear this shit the fuck down Every motherfucking day Until y'all give us our shit We gonna go from plantation to plantation And kill you motherfuckers until we get our shit Stop listening to these stupid niggas man This shit pisses me the fuck off That you niggas can listen to these people Shouts out man Shouts out to the people that gave their life But I guarantee you A lot of you brothers out there You would have gave your life for it Me myself I would have gave my fucking life for this shit Ain't no motherfucking way I would have set my motherfucking monkey ass here Just to play a video game uh, A street fighter Just to sit No I would have gave my life Fuck out of here but what they want to do is they want to look at us like we're less than because we reap the benefits of Martin Luther King, Mega Evers, and, and, and other people. No, we would have done the same thing if we right now today, right now today, if Martin Luther King, uh, uh, X, none of these other brothers and sisters ever gave their fucking lives. You mean to tell me that we would be sitting right the fuck now? Right this very fucking second and, and I wouldn't be willing to give my fucking life To do something better for my daughter Fuck you I'm gonna tell you straight up
I would give my life right now for my daughter and I would say, fuck you. I'm doing it. Let's go. Let me let, let me do what them niggas do in, in Iran and Iraq and let me strap a bomb and let's go. Strap it. Let's go. Don't play with me. Strap the bomb up. Let's motherfucking go. Let's take them all out so we can change shit. That's a fact, chef. We fucking got busy. It, it, it wasn't just Martin Luther King or the niggas that that, that, that that unfortunately had their lives taken. Niggas was ready to give their motherfucking lives. Not, and, and see, not only in the 1960s, niggas was giving their lives f- since. Since. Let me, let me say this shit again. Niggas have been giving their lives since we was taken from the shores of fucking West Africa. Don't play with me. Do not play with me. Do not play with me. We can go back. It ain't no bullshit. Like niggas was just sitting back. Oh, niggas ain't. Oh, oh niggas just chilling. Niggas didn't give a fuck. No, we always gave a fuck. Come on, man. Don't play with me. I do not know where the fuck you niggas learned your history from, but that was never a part of my repertoire. That shit was never a part of my repertoire to where it was only King and, and, and these was the only niggas. No. No, because the way how I grew up, if shit didn't happen, nigga, I was ready to give mine. I was ready to give my motherfucking life for this shit. Uh, I, ha- I had a history teacher. She was ready to give her motherfucking life, bro. Don't play with me with this shit, bro. This nigga want to talk about uh, white supremacy, but no, 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 no. There were black people who 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 couldn't give their motherfucking life to this shit due to the fact that other black people had already given their life to this shit. Don't try to make it seem like it was just some bullshit. No, it was more than that. It was way more than that. And niggas want to sit back and play. Niggas want to sit back and play. It's 20 motherfucking 23. You mean that I, w- I was born in 1985. I'm going to keep it a buck. I was born in 1985. I guarantee you right now, my uncles, my aunties, had shit went left to where they weren't born under the Martin Luther King doctrine, and shit got and when when shit popped off, man, I'm telling you, there would have been so many niggas. Look at Snick. Listen, Snick was was really the main reason why shit even popped off the way that it did. Niggas is missing the shit. Niggas is totally missing everything. Niggas almost forgot what Snick was. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not buying. It. I'm not buying that. I'm not listening to it. It's bullshit. But I'm not listening to it. It's bullshit. There was so many motherfucking people, bro. Like <sighs> Red October, bro. When King got killed, niggas was running out left and right. Niggas wanted to die when King got killed, bro. That was the whole fucking point of the goddamn Red October shit. That was the whole point. Niggas was like, fuck it, we going out here. Now niggas want to try to minimize us to, well, well, if King didn't die, we wouldn't have had shit. How the fuck do you even say that? How do you even say that when you look at the niggas the, like like it was it was young people I'm 30 I'm th- I'm 37 at the time right like right now but bruh you mean to tell me if some shit popped off nigga come on man knock it off stop that crazy shit let, let me play a little bit more of this niggas are dumb that shit is crazy to me <laughs> That is crazy to me that niggas just have the nerve to even say this dumbass shit. But let's go. Voted alone. 
there were black people that were still in Congress at the time who when they wrote those the laws. Law and who voted the law? Both blacks and whites in conjunction no, is what I'm answering. I'm answering no your question. I'm sorry. There were, there were wait, I'm sorry. Let, 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 wait, wait, let me make sure. So I'm sorry. Let me make sure that we're crystal clear here because you keep interrupting. Let me make sure that we're crystal clear here. You're saying before 1964, when the first Civil Rights Act passed, you're saying there were no black people in Congress during that time? Is that what you're saying? Because what, Congress, what let, me make sure, let, me, let me make sure I'm asking you. Congress passes the laws and there were black people in Congress at the time of the passing. Yeah, we only had about two. I think we had one in... I think we had one in like Mississippi or some crazy shit, and we had one in uh, we had like two. It, it was what well, I I don't want to. We had like two, but the brother is right about that thing of the Civil Rights Act. So it was black people and white people in conjunction working together to get this progress. Yeah, I do know that earlier in this conversation, he straight said, "Oh, I don't speak in absolutes." He said it. He said it's not an intelligent argument to speak in absolutes. So then he turns around and what does he throw to me? An absolute. What absolute did I throw at you? You just said, so you're saying there are no blacks? That's well, what you, you must. Said. I'm sorry, in order to disagree with me, when I make the statement that blacks and whites in conjunction did this thing, you said or you that just, I, I, my no, I said that multiple times and you disagreed no, with it. I'm I sorry, said, you know what? Then that's my fault. I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. If whites I, voted amongst racial lines, it would not get passed. Okay, period. so I'm sorry, then I must have misunderstood or maybe you... No, that's bullshit because whites had nothing to do with it. Whites had nothing to do with it. It was actually the president that said, hey, yo, look, we need to get this shit passed because these niggas are running the fuck around and they're fucking shit up. And they're not going to stop until we pass this shit. This is what the fuck happened. In, in 1965, after King got assassinated, niggas was going crazy. So it had nothing to do with white people and what the fuck they were talking about. It was like, no, either we finna get our shit or we not. And if we're not going to get our shit, we finna tear this shit the fuck up from the ground up. That's what really happened. That's what the whole Red October shit was about. We tore this shit the fuck up from Miami all the way down, all the way up to motherfucking uh, uh, New York City. Like niggas tore this shit up. Let's go. You missed the two. Let's just make sure that you we're can't crystal clear here. Yourself. So you I got you. If I, I never said we did. I got you. Hey, again, let's, so that's all I let's, said. It took let's not, if, let's whites not. Voted, if whites voted amongst racial lines, as a matter of fact, what you're saying is apparently the blacks that were there, however many they were. Okay, so he's wrong again because he said if whites voted amongst racial lines. If if all whites said, hey, you know what? We're not gonna give these niggas shit. That still wouldn't have worked because niggas would have still been tearing this shit up to this fucking day. So Tommy is still wrong. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. If white said we're not going to give black people shit right now, uh, Baltimore would look like a motherfucking uh, uh, uninhabitable zone. Culver City will, look, will be a fucking in uninhabitable zone miami florida would be an uninhabitable zone nigga go back and look at that shit during those motherfucking times in the 60s nigga black people were tearing this shit the fuck up when king got assassinated they was tearing this shit the fuck up stop playing with me all you gotta do is look at what happened I'm, while while he's going back doing his Jolly Rancher shit, I'm gonna pull up what was actually going on. Let's go. Were they voted for their own interest? Did they not? Let's not get caught up on miscommunication. Instead, no, no, let's, no, just ask, let's update no, the conversation. So to be sure, the original thing that was being stated was, which I stated, and it seemed like you disagree with, but maybe that was a miscommunication. So to be crystal clear here, it was black people and white people in conjunction passing the laws that prevented the further discrimination. Correct. No, here's what I'm saying. Wow. You, that's what I'm saying. Do you disagree or not? I heard what you said. See what just happened? I listened to everything you said. Okay. Did I cut you off? I okay, said so no, I was... and I'd like to elaborate. Okay, you know? go ahead. Because if I got to listen to you, surely you want to listen to why I'm I listening. No. Go ahead. I said no because of simply this. We needed them. They didn't need us. If they had just said, we wanted to vote upon racial lines like we did. Because unless you're telling me there was out of the three blacks, one of them said, let's keep them down. So the whites of the blacks voted amongst racial lines. If the whites had done the same thing, Bill dead quick. 
So it took some white people to go against their own best interest if white supremacy helps whites. So once again, that has nothing to do with the question that I asked, because to be crystal clear, but I'm not going to ask it. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm just going to go go, go ahead and state it and then we'll move past it. What I said was the fact that there were also black people, black legislators that were also involved with the passing of the Civil Rights Act. Right. And so hold on. Hold on. This nigga just lied. I got to rewind it. I, I'm sorry. I got to rewind it. This nigga Tommy just lied. He said Brr. we needed them. He said we needed them. They didn't need us. This is bullshit. Do your research on the motherfucking Red Summer. They needed us. They needed us to stop tearing up the fucking country. They needed us. We was tearing this shit up limb by motherfucking limb. We was pulling this, this fucking country a fucking part. What the fuck is he talking about? We was pulling this fucking country apart. We was saying, fuck you. Fuck this. We finna do whatever the fuck we wanna do. What is he talking about that we needed them? No, they needed us to stop doing what we did. We allowed our youth to run the fuck wild and say, fuck this country. So much so to where they was like, yo. All right, <laughs> right. we're we going to have to figure out some kind of chill for this shit. We're going to have to figure out some kind of chill for this. This is what the fuck was going on. Oh, bad hombre. Well, that's too fast. Damn. All right, I, I'll slow it down. I guess I'll put it on regular. I'll put it on regular. So, so the nigga Tommy is lying, bro. Like, we didn't need white motherfuckers for nothing. The only thing that we needed white motherfuckers to do at this time was to stop bombing our motherfucking churches that we had kids in. That was the last fucking straw. Do you not fucking remember? That was the last straw when niggas was like, fuck no, fuck all this shit. These white motherfuckers are doing this shit and we sitting back and we on our patty cake shit. Fuck that. This is what happened. Now Tommy wants to cape for for the white motherfuckers that was doing this evil shit to fucking black people. Fuck no. Let's play. Let's go. It wasn't simply um it wasn't simply white people that passed the legislation that made it illegal for them to discriminate. That was something that, again people worked in conjunction and so yes this was something that we did together. This wasn't something that only white people did. And with that being said, given that those laws have been on the books for over half a freaking century at this point. The idea that now because of the fact that black people are able to make money on YouTube somehow invalidates the ex of white supremacy is absurd obviously again there are different areas where white supremacy flourishes and where it chooses to focus and others where it will not at certain times it doesn't mean that it's still not in play so the idea that white that black mortgages for example as recent as 2009 when we had all of these intentional subprime loans that were given to black Ooh. people despite Ooh. credit score despite um, what was the other one it was uh, despite income and credit score black people were pushed into subprime loans and so that the housing crisis directly impacted black people significantly worse than its white counterparts that was white supremacy that wiped out white uh, black wealth so these things do still impact us these things these things have existed for quite some time mm. Mm. a system that allowed blacks to get homes when without that system they wouldn't have been allowed to get it <laughs> is now white supremacist so that would be like a system <laughs> that allowed stupid. blacks to get into princeton and harvard mm. when they wouldn't have been able to get in it sure. and then they failed out because they really yeah. weren't qualified to do it like <sighs> a lot of affirmative action has done yeah. has given blacks opportunities that they technically is he dumb qualified to get Okay. That when they fail. Yo, I'm sorry. Tommy Sotomayor is not intelligent. This nigga's dumb as fuck. He couldn't pick up the basic shit that this nigga just said. This is sad, man. 
for you niggas, hey, listen, if you're a Tommy Sotomayor uh, empathizer, let me drop the link so you can come in and, and we can converse. But yo, this is bad. Let's, let's listen to a bit more. Let's listen to a bit more. This is horrific. I want to make sure we yeah. fail that in itself is this white is horrific. supremacy that they gave that these blacks could have said he doesn't I understand white supremacy this, no oh he's, a, he's, a tip. Offering, he's trying to make I it seem I like can't. i'm not he's trying to make it seem like he doesn't understand white supremacy this is what he's doing this is his shtick he's trying to make it seem like he doesn't understand white supremacy so let's continue They're gonna take it or they could have paid it it's white Here. supremacy because they gave them an opportunity to get something that without the subprime loans, they would have never been able to get it. Mm, so mm, mm. let me explain to you why you're wrong here. <laughs> Again, so I'm going to give you a simple analogy. Say we gave people <laughs> loans until, I'm, I'm sorry, say we allowed people to come into a classroom and we said, hey, we're going to let you into this classroom. But once we let the black people into the classroom, once they got there, we raised the curriculum standard so high uh -oh. that it was impossible for them to continue. Oh. It was impossible for them to pass. <laughs> and then we look at their failure and say, so you must not have been qualified for the class <laughs> at, at, at all. While mean. Yo, there's nothing the fuck else to say after that. There's nothing else to say after that. Are you niggas actually still on this fucking stupid shit? What the fuck is you niggas talking, man? While we're giving a different class to white people where there is no change in standard. The reason why this analogy holds up so well is because with these subprime loans, what they had was variable interest rates. Meaning we go. Now, see, this is the part that i actually tuned into i fast forward like 25 minutes and i heard this shit i was like yo this nigga tommy is really don't know what the fuck he's talking about like this nigga is really dumb so let's listen and i was i wasn't surprised but i was just kind of like damn like nigga's really dumb through the rubrics necessary to determine whether you qualify <laughs> for this loan or not after we've gone through that rubric now once you're in bed with this loan we raise the interest. well hold on let, let, now let's check what the fuck is a rubric to you crazy niggas out here what the fuck is a rubric if you don't know it's okay i'm only talking to the stupid niggas who think they smart but let's go interest rate up sometimes increasing your mortgage um by I don't know, 60%, 50%, 70%. So now you can no longer afford your mortgage. They did this specifically with these subprime loans because they had variable interest rates. Meanwhile, white people with lower credit scores mm. and lower income were not given those subprime loans. They intentionally uh, steered specifically black That's borrowers into them. They then settled with the government to the tunes of billions of That's dollars, a fact. None of uh, the vast majority of which did not go back to the consumers. So the now black people <coughs> are desperate to hold on to these homes. This is a fact. Do, do, do y'all remember Occupy Wall Street? All of this bullshit when white motherfuckers was so upset about all of this shit because what he's talking about actually, if we if we're gonna be honest, this actually affected white people way more than it affected black people. But what he's talking about that it affected black people so much because, um, my brother, my blood brother actually got caught up in the same shit, the subprime loan bullshit. And if you're anybody that knows anybody, this affected somebody that you fucking know. So let's go. Hoping the interest rate goes back down so that they're back able to um, get the mortgage rates that they're supposed to. Facts. And instead, they're now investing their life savings, <laughs> etc. until they are eventually foreclosed on, meaning mm -hmm. all wealth input put into that pro um, property is now completely wiped out. That's Facts. what happened to black people. So then to, to, to simply say, well, we gave you the home, <laughs> but when we gave you the home with factors such as variable interest rates, which are guaranteed to make you lose that home, then that's not truly giving me the opportunity. You gave me the opportunity to fail. You didn't give right. me the opportunity to build wealth because. Look at Tommy. He's looking. He's like, damn, what can I find to get away, get away from this? Nigga, there's nothing you can do that you can find to get the fuck away from this. Because the truth of the matter is, this is what th this is what happened 
to not only black people but this is something that happened to american people because they were so in tune with saving the companies that did this shit to fucking people the people that did the the the, the, the i'm not gonna say the people but the organizations that did this shit to the american people they were allowed to go about their motherfucking lives Damn, do y'all see that nigga face? How he kind of looking at the camera? <laughs> I, I kind of stopped it right there, but he looked guilty as fuck. <laughs> but yo, like this is literally what happened. Like, do y'all remember when, when uh, back in two thousand eight, when they were were issuing these subprime loans, and it did affect black people a lot. It really did. And he wants to say like, oh man, fuck that. Like, who cares? Like, it happened to black people. But no. That's bullshit. If the interest rate stayed the same and I was able to continue to make my payments until the house became completely mine, then all of that mortgage and all of that property value <coughs> and the growth thereof would be completely wealth. But they did the exact opposite because they knew by raising those interest rates that they would not be able to afford those things, which is why they settled to the tunes of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. Thanks. So it's not just it, it is white supremacists to intentionally target black people with these specific loans, which we have the evidence for, which we you do intentionally have the tar um, targeted a group of people who were begging you for an opportunity. to. No, there, there was no begging. Let's let's stop that right now. There was no begging of anything. When these people, when they when when they signed their loans for these homes, it was okay. I can pay five hundred and fifty dollars a month. But what happened with these subprime loans was they said, "Oh, the the market got fucked up." So now they doubled the shit. So instead of it being five hundred and fifty dollars, now it's a thousand dollars and one hundred dollars more. This what the fuck is what happened? So now the economy fucked up. All of this shit's going on. This is what happened. It had nothing to do with just a regular person working a job and they can't pay. When they initially started their payments, they had the ability to pay it. They had the ability to pay it. And this is what this, this is what this dude is trying to make it seem like. Oh, black people is just full of shit and we don't got the money to pay it. No, we had the money to pay it. We had the money to pay this shit to be able to get a house and if you use the standard across the board that everybody had to use no it wasn't that everybody had this standard it wasn't that it, it wasn't a standard across the board for everybody that wasn't what it is if you've ever purchased a home let me just make this clear if you've if you've ever purchased a home what's your the way how it's calculated it's on how you can pay your your mortgage that's what it is so if you work whatever job or whatever the case you and your woman it, it's it's based off of that but what what happened with these subprime loans is that they what they did was they doubled the bitch they doubled the shit to where now it's like okay well you can't pay your shit when you could have paid it but they doubled it. So now instead of you just paying your regular $1,400, now this shit is $1,400 times two. And it's like, hold on, I didn't sign up for that, but they didn't give a fuck about you as a person. They didn't give a fuck. So they started snatching your shit. This is what happened. They That's would have never been able to get a house. Oh, you just heard me. Remember I, told you they, I, remember I told you that they did the study and they found that black people with higher incomes and higher credit scores than their white counterparts were still given subprime loans. So if we're only controlling for the white black people, I mean, for the black people who have more income and credit score, the two largest factors on which are determining the factors of your loan, if we're controlling for only those groups and still giving them subprime loans, that becomes predatory. It's no longer the same rubric. That's my point. And my point would be then on top of that would be simple. When you're talking about banking, you're talking about Steens and Bergs and stuff. No, the fuck you're not. No, no, none of this means anything at this point. 
What he's now trying to do is the Jewish shit. Uh, oh, but what about the Jews? The Steins and Steens and the Bergs and no, it has nothing to do with them. The only thing it has to do with is that America said, "Hey, when, when you look at a lot of these these companies countrywide and all of these people, I'm telling you, I have family members that went through this shit countrywide. All of these fucking companies that got bailed out." All of these companies got bailed the fuck out. They got bailed the fuck out, yo. But the American people, the American person was still, they had to sit back and held the fucking bag. Go back to fucking 2008 when Obama first came in. If y'all don't fucking remember, go back. It was all the same. This is why people was like, man, Obama got dealt a bad hand. You know, he was a black man. He got built. He got dealt a bad, a bad hand. No, that wasn't the fucking case. The truth of the matter was, is that it was bullshit from the fucking beginning. It was bullshit from the fucking beginning. Let's go. Heinz and all of these and, and Goldman's and all of that. So you can put it on white supremacy. Or you could put it on the people who are setting the rates. It had nothing to do with white supremacy in the motherfucking people that were setting this and setting that. That wasn't the case. The, what happened was, is that they fumbled the motherfucking bag. They overextended themselves. And due to them overextending themselves, the bubble burst. That's what the fuck happened, you stupid idiot. The bubble burst. They overextended themselves because not only did black people uh, suffer from this, white people did too. They, uh, 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 this particular sector, they overextended themselves. This is what the fuck happened because everybody was getting homes. I'm from Miami, Florida. I remember seeing all of these skyscrapers, all of this shit going on. Da -da -da, da -da -da. No, it had nothing to do with white or black. It had everything to do with these companies overextending themselves. And even though the, that the companies overextended themselves, guess what? The people had to pay for it. The people had to pay for it. That's all the fuck it was. It had nothing to do with... <clears throat> oh, uh, my bank is this, so I'm not going to get charged. Yes, the fuck you were. Everything went up after that. Remember Occupy Wall Street that, that went on for about two and a half years? Occupy Wall Street. Do y'all remember that? All of this was a direct result from this particular thing. Like, get the fuck out of here, bruh. The, the reason why uh, black people gave Obama the brevity that they gave him is because, you know, we kind of understood like, yo, this is some bullshit, you know, this is some bullshit that, they, that he got dealt with. But then after we started to look at like, hold on, like Obama is agreeing with all of this homosexuality shit, but. He's not fucking with black people. He's not trying to give us things that we need, but he's just so quick on giving homosexual shit. We started looking at it like, hold on, man, this is bullshit. What the fuck is going on? Like, I'm not fucking with that. That's when we started looking at things like, nah, I'm not fucking with that. That's really what happened. Let's go. For these loans, you could put it on them. You could talk about them. But it seems like we won't talk about them because if you want to say what they were doing, those people, they are not the white Caucasians that you talk about or none of you talk about. That white supremacy, uh -huh. that white supremacy seemed to be a bit of Jewish supremacy. I'm pretty sure those are the ones who are said that those are the Fed, the, the, the Fed setting, setting that stuff. I guarantee you that's who that is. 
Listen, I guarantee like, you, you're banking. That's who that is. <coughs> you're trying to get me deplatformed. De de I'm just going to say for the record, though, just to be clear. How am I? Well, listen to what you just well, what he just said. I'm trying to now get him deplatformed so we can talk on you these white people stuff Hold and up, talk bad nigga. about white people. But when we talk about these other people, we going to get deplatformed. I do agree with what Tommy you saying right here. Like, fuck what these other people are talking about. If it's truth, it's truth. And we need to talk about it. That's a fact. So fuck all that. I'm about to get the platform because I'm talking about Jews, nigga. Fuck all that. If they, if they're doing fucked up shit that harms uh, black society, let's we have to talk about it. So fuck all that. Let's go. We, we sure move. would. Uh, but uh, hold on. Are we gonna sit here for not right now and pretend that Jews aren't white? Is that what we're saying? Apparently, we're, you're if you if we're not. What do they pretend, fill out on the census? Wait, shouldn't we be calling a spade a spade? Are Jews white? Yes or no? What do they put on their census? Aren't aren't Africans black? Yet they still got FBA. Jews. Oh, he just, just making up shit. Them. He no. making up okay, shit. Okay, so man. let me explain to you just really quickly, and then we're gonna get right back to the fact that Jews are white. The reason why black people have a specific ethnicity that Jews say white. I got you. The, the reason why black people have a specific ethnicity that distinguishes them from other black people is because everyone else in this country has the ability to cling on to specific cultural heritage. You ask an Italian American, where are your parents from, or so on and so? They'll say they're from Italy, from Mother Italy. So they're Italian Americans. You can ask other. Um, my so and so is Swedish. Oh, I'm German. Oh, I'm French. Oh, I'm Polish. Oh, I'm whatever the freak, right? So you have all of these different whiteness. I'm Spanish. So you got all these different whiteness and, and these different places that people can can identify. You can ask Asians, where are you from? If you just say you're just broadly Asian, it's like sure, but what are you more specifically? And they'll tell you, I'm Chinese. I'm Korean. I'm Japanese. I'm Indonesian, whatever the freak, right? So at the end of the day, they all have these cultures. When that culture was stripped from us in order to have an understanding of the specific ethnicity that was blackness, because ethnicity is beyond just race. Ethnicity can be even within subgroups, depending on how you want to zoom in or out. And so black people as an ethnicity are a specific distinct group of people who are all collected under the same country who have yep. been here for God knows how long, literally building yo 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 uh somebody was saying i was muted mississippi mud oh no that wasn't mississippi mud yeah i'm still here but now listen to my listen to my brother man if y'all know this brother man you know big shouts out to him man he killing this nigga tommy and uh i want to try to bring this brother on man for for a conversation but yeah he's killing this nigga so uh let me let him just do what he do is he killing this thing in this country and then during all of that time not having all of their I mean, having all of their ties to their origin severed so as a so as a result of that our origin is here our legacy our ethnicity starts here in the united states as black americans that's why it is more than just a race it is also an ethnicity so there is a distinction between us and other immigrants who have came over here willingly who haven't been subjected to the exact same things and have entirely different cultural structures mm, that's why the same thing italian too. Now, with that being said, no, hold on. With that being said, making sure that we're still focused here, Jews are considered white. Jews actually have perpetuated plenty of the white supremacy. Mm, Jews mm, have mm. been putting on their, um, on their, what is it called, o on the census, white for over, a, I want to say over a century. So if that's the case, the idea that now we're going to disambiguate white supremacy by focusing specifically on Jews seems misguided. Why wouldn't we do the same thing if there's some specific region that Italians are covering or something? We don't do that. It's white. No, and it's yes, we would. Supremacy. Yes, we would. If Italians were doing something the same way we talk about what the Arabs did. If you talk about uh, somebody else being. Yo, this nigga is begging. This nigga Tommy is begging. Yo, this nigga's really killing this nigga for real. This nigga Tommy is begging. But let's let's continue. Please, baby, please. In uh, a Hispanic, well, blacks can be Hispanic. I don't know. Blacks can be French. Blacks can be a lot of these things you just said, and they sure. can trace their lineage to a lot of these places. Except so for the happen. except for except for FBAs or ADOS. Well, and see, that's another thing to that's say that these people are that they cannot. 
we the vast have majority 40, cannot. Well, we have 50 million, almost 50 million blacks in the United States. They claim the guy who talked to me today, and I think you might have been there when he said 50 million of them are ADOS. I don't All know about that. I have no idea. No, I don't know if that's that's no that's that's decidedly not true. Two I of said, my best, but that's what he, but he was well, able to say. Tommy, listen, I cannot contend with idiots on Twitter making dumb statements that can't be verified. I'm not going to argue what that moron said. I can only contend with what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is the argument that you were giving that it couldn't be white supremacy, despite the fact that it was predatory, given the fact. Oh, that I didn't the, say uh, no, no. I didn't say it couldn't be. Well, here's what I said. It can't be if you choose to take it. They can give you the thing off top and it's white supremacy is why they're offering it to you. The idea of they gave guns to blacks to see what would happen to them in these neighborhoods. Yes, they did that. But when you take it and do it, it stopped being white supremacy. Here's the thing. It still flows downstream from lawyer. it. Huh? It still flows downstream from it. Well, hold on. I'm still not. Go I'm still going to say that just because somebody do it, there can be a bunch of holes out here trying to give people STDs. But if you don't sleep with them, if you don't say, hey, let me get a, a, a test before I sleep with you, you can stop that even though they're irresponsible. You can. Sure. There are a lot of roving people out in, in the streets who are going around grabbing doors to see who house they can get in. But if yours is locked and they move on, that's how you stop it. I'm not going to continue to blame someone else when a part of it was I could have stopped it when you go and get one of these loans you can have a lawyer look over it you can have a lawyer understand you can say i won't take it another thing you can do by that time we had enough blacks and we had a black bank at the time so no black person should have gotten any home loan had it not come from that black bank since we already don't trust whites we you're, had these things in place you're arguing for segregation huh you're arguing for segregation you're saying black people should only do business yes All right, man. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, might come back tomorrow with some shit. Whatever. It's Saturday, you know. Football is on, so there's a good chance I won't come back, you know. But uh, yeah, man. I might, I might come back. See what's up. But uh, yeah, man, thank you so much for tuning in. It's your brother outside the cube. Uh, pieces of shit like Tommy Sotomayor. You know, I just kind of wanted to bring this to y'all so y'all can see, you know, what was going on. But it is what it is, man. You know, thank you so much for tuning in, man. If you want to hit the like, go ahead and do that. If you don't want to hit the like, I'm totally cool with that too. I'm still that nigga for real. So yeah, man, let me go ahead and get up out of here. Um, I don't know. I may I may drink a few tonight. You know, I may drink a few tonight, and I may come back live on some on some shit and come back. You know, and talk some shit. But yeah, I'm just kind of chilling right now. So um, yeah, we at it. So yeah, man. Thank you so much, man. You guys have a good night, and let me go ahead and get up out of here, man. Peace, y'all. Show some love, man. Hit the like button, all of that. And like I said, man, if you don't hit the like, if you don't hit the like button. It is what it is. We're just gonna go on without.